I don't want to pretend like this isn't a thrill for me. Uh, Andy Garcia, welcome to TCM. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. That's very kind. I'm delighted that you came in here to talk about uh, political movies. You've chosen one, culled from the list of the New Republic last year, top 100 most significant political films of all time. Number 71, Being There, Hal Ashby, 1979, of course, Peter Sellers, top the cast. It didn't strike me at first as a political film. As soon as I saw the list, I was like, oh, I should have put being there. Yeah, right? it kind of sneaks in kind of as a comedy, you know, in a sense. Then you start to analyze the dynamics in which this whole thing hangs on, you know. What draws you to the film? Well, Hal Ashby, you know, who's always been a real inspiration to me. Uh, Even as you were like coming up as an actor? As I was coming up as an actor, uh, all of his movies starting from Harold and Maude on, I had the great privilege to work with him in one of his last movies, A Million Ways to Die. And because being there was in my top three or four films or five films, if you would say, and uh, I would talk to him a lot about being there. And, you know, Peter Sellers is someone that we all grew up with, who was also a big, you know, hero of mine as a young moviegoer. Before I even was aspiring to be an actor, Peter Sellers was someone that uh, gravitated towards. So this movie was like a perfect storm between the Kaczynski novel that it was adapted from and putting Peter in that character and in that world. In the movie we were doing, we were improvising the whole film. On in a daily, million ways. Yeah, it was yeah. A, totally improvised. That's like an Oliver Stone script, right? Initially, Robert Town initially, but initially. Robert Town like helped uncredited, right? Oh. There was like three different scripts yeah. and the town one was only like a beat outline. Right. So we were already starting to shoot and we had to fill in, you know, the beats of the story. And it was very exciting. But when I talked to him about being there, the first thing I said, you know, that movie compared to this movie felt like it was like Shakespeare it was very precise. And he said something to me, I never forget. And he says, oh, no, no. He says, you know, yes, there was a script. But, you know, when Peter got really hold of the character, he would come up and say things constantly, you know, in the movie. And everybody knew that he was, you know, could say anything at any time. And they, everybody just, whatever he would say, they would justify it as the profound truth. <laughs> right, which makes, which, right. Which yeah, so whatever he said. Kid, yeah, that became. And he said he wanted to reshoot the movie after two weeks of work. He wanted, wanted to reshoot. No, Pete, set, Sellers. Peter wanted to reshoot being Because he said he didn't quite have the character, and Hal said, no, no, you got the character. You got the character, <laughs> yeah. And I'm no Hal Ashby expert. I saw the documentary, and I loved the from the landlord in 1970 through being there in 1979. Seven movies in nine years. They're all amazing, extraordinary. right? Extraordinary films. And my impression of Hal is that he just couldn't figure out how to get along enough with the money people, right? Yeah. He was a maverick, and he was sort of like a beatnik documentarian in a way, you know, being an editor first for Norm Jewison and won an Oscar for In the Heat of the Night, I yeah, believe. right. He was very experimental in the work, from the Harold and Maud to Last Detail. And once I worked with him, I realized there was a lot of improvisation. And one of the things that I have taken to this day from Hal was that the actors, he would give the actors a lot of freedom. And he would say, I never pretend to know more about the characters than the actors do. And he would, he, the, the scenes would happen and the actors would contribute or whatever impulses they might have. And in our case, it was totally fly by the seat of your pants because there was didn't. no script. But the one thing that he never did was judge. The space he created was a totally improvisational, experimental space for the actors to work in. So if you do a take, he'd come up to you and he'd go like, that was interesting. Right. He goes, all right, we got that. Try something else, Right. keep working. But it wasn't, there was never a sense that you had just done it wrong. Never, it was, right. never judged. And I think that's the thing about Hal. He was very in search of something always. He's like, you guys play, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to keep moving the camera, I'm an editor. I know he didn't care about overlapping, he didn't care about anything. He said, just you guys. And I think his movies have this resonance of human behavior Definitely. that is very unlike many movies ever made, in a way. Yeah, they no, were, they weren't overthought, they weren't overly designed. He was interested in, okay, we'll see what you guys got going, you know. He said every scene is like a starfish, and... The objective of the scene that, that moves the story is at the core of the starfish. But from take to take, you can achieve that objective from any direction you want. But you have to achieve the objective or else the story stops. Before we show being there, uh, Andy, is there something for people who've never seen it or people who've seen it five or six times that you think, as a huge fan of this movie, they ought to, what's something to look for? Well, there's so many, I mean, obviously the, the, the conceit that Peter has learned his entire behavior in life 
by watching television. And there's so many beautiful things that were maybe scripted, but I think also a lot of it had to do with Peter's own comedic imagination. It's a sublime performance. All right, let's watch it. We have more to say afterwards. Uh, Andy, thanks very much. Uh, here's the film uh, from 1979, directed by Hal Ashby. Peter Sellers, Shirley MacLaine, Melvin Douglas being there. Back here with Andy Garcia. Thank you for uh, doing this. Appreciate it. Great to see you. Um, My pleasure. Andy has picked Being There. It came in number 71 on the uh, New Republic's list of the 100 most significant political films of all time. You worked with Hal Ashby in 8 Million Ways to Die, which came out in 1986. His and last film. His basically. last film. Still a great opportunity to work with Hal. Yeah, amazing, with amazing. And I like, of course, I picked his brain about everything, including a lot about being there. Because you already loved this movie. Oh, and all of his films, yeah. you know, and, you know, Bo Bridges, who was uh, met during that time through Jeff, who was in The Landlord. Right, and, which know, was his, Hal's first movie. First movie, yeah. yeah. He, t he used to tell me how he used to sleep in the cutting room at the old Laird Studios at night. You know, he would never go home. <laughs> but anyway, so he talked to me about the ending of the film where he walks on water. He walks you know, on water, right, And yeah. his life is a state of mind. So apparently, Robert C. Jones, who was an editor and uh, screenwriter who's right, uncredited, yeah. He also, I think, wrote Coming Home, if I'm not, or part he of did. it. He's one of the writers on Coming yeah. Home, yeah. So he called him and he said, how's it going, Hal? This is Hal talking to me. He says, he called me, he said, how's it going? I go, it's going great. And you know, Peter would, whatever Peter would do, everybody would justify it as the profound truth. And that's how we got through the day, you know? <laughs> right. And, they say, and he says, like, he could have walked on water and they would have believed it. Yeah. And there was a beat and he said, in fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And they went back. But before they went back, he called Robert Downey Sr., yeah. who had had an image in his movie, Putney Swope, a man walking on water. He said, oh, and he was okay. a friend, and he said, you know, Robert, I'd like to use that image in my movie. And Robert said, oh, that's not mine. That's from the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, yeah. That's I already stole yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they went back, and they put snow on the ground, and then they did that. Because they had, they had Peter walk away from the funeral. Right. And I think the, the original ending, I could be wrong, but as I remember it, uh, Shirley would f possibly follow him and she'd go, where'd you go? He's trying to see, I've been looking all over for you. And he would say, I think, I think the way he explained it was, I was looking for you too, Eve. <laughs> and then it would go away. But they had him walking away, so they picked him up, you know, and he does the thing with the, with the tree that's bent over and then he walks out and he sticks the umbrella down. And then they cut to these outtakes where he's breaking character which was such a, a bold thing to do in those days. In fact, Hal told me that he brought the print to the Man's Chinese. It opened in Christmas Day at the Man's Chinese Theater. And he brought the print with him that morning because he was tweaking with it. And maybe he put those outtakes in. I don't know what he did, you know? Yeah. Peter Sellers not pleased with the outtakes, right? Well, my understanding was that he was not, he felt that that, you know, showed him breaking character and then in his eyes cost him the Oscar. I think I know the answer to this. Do the crew like Hal? Everybody loved Hal. Everybody loved Hal, except, nothing. except the, the suits. Except the suits, yeah. <laughs> the and suits. that's always, that's okay well, with Well, the it. suits yeah. never got to talk to them because if they showed up on the set, he just wouldn't come out of the trailer. Right. Andy Garcia, thank you. This was really wonderful. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure. Andy's done for the night, but the political movies continue here on TCM, as always, uncut and commercial free. <laughs> Next on TCM, The Candidate, then Harlan County, USA. And later, The Manchurian Candidate, Freedoms Under Siege on TCM Tonight. <laughs>